Hey guys, welcome back. What a fun trading day today. It was a bit of a roller coaster pre market. We had a lot of activity with ANVS, and we also had CRVS, which started ripping a little bit later uh, in the morning. Both these stocks I want to talk about, obviously, to review the trades we made on them. ANVS was one of our better trading days today. Thank God after that ridiculous uh, scratch central day I had yesterday on Monday that I know you guys were calling me out for, which is totally understandable, but everyone has one of those days where they trip over themselves a little bit more. There's also a few other things I wanna talk about. First, the PPS indicator, is it good, is it not? Will I be using it? We were talking about it in the stream today, so we'll talk about that. It's kinda of cool, it puts these little blue and yellow blinky things on your chart, I think you guys will like it. And then also, quick little fun fact side note, on in September, it's my birthday, and I'm going to Portugal for a month, I'm renting a house, and it's gonna be a quite a good little surf trip. Um, it's gonna be in Pinche, Pinche. I hope I'm saying that right. Anyway, there's supposed to be some good fun uh, waves down there, and since I'm having my Florida withdrawal, obviously in Berlin there's no uh, surfing. I'm gonna spend some time there and do some surfing. So if you guys, you know, live around there, if you guys know some people, know some things, have some recommendations, where to rent a surfboard, or to, I'm definitely gonna buy a wetsuit. Um, so just all those little things, leave comments below, email me, my email's in the video description below, I would love to get in touch. Um, yeah, so let's review the trades, review the PPS indicator, and let's review ANVS, CRVS, are those possible swing trades? Let's find out. Right after you hit that like button and subscribe if you're new here, we would love to see you again, especially if you join the community, join the live streams, join the chat, which starts every morning at 9.15 a.m. to first review the watch list and trade the market open. Let's go to the charts now. All right, all right, guys, welcome back. So let's see here. We made, um, today was not a bad day. Um, I, <laughs> unfortunately, this feature is not yet out in trade journals. I can't see yet if this is my best day. I don't think it is. I had some pretty... Pretty okay days early on on the challenge, but um, yeah, we made $234 today, mainly from ANVS. Um, and I think this should start picking up because the big reason we never had like, you know, $500 or $1,000 a day on the challenge account, on the $25,000 challenge account, is because we were trading with $1,000 position size. So, you know, if we had $1,000 days, it would mean we needed to make 100% um, return on $1,000 position size. So that's insane. Right now we're trading with about, um, pre-market about a thousand once the market opens about 1500 um, I think once this week I got a trade over a two thousand but still on average my probably trades are about fifteen hundred dollars so today you know we had a really really nice growth I mean we're talking about like 17 percent I'm pretty excited about that um, really really nice couldn't really be more more happy um, about that actually wait hold on that's totally wrong uh, yeah, 10 percent yeah okay yeah yeah, somewhere in that category um, of about 15, 17%. Okay, so dude, yeah. So let's talk about ANVS and FTEK and CRVS. I also wanna say and think about is ANVS or CO, CRVS a swing trade opportunity? And I also wanna talk about this PPS indicator. Um, is it good or not? Is it something that I wanna continue using? And we were talking about it in the um, PPS indicator. Um, in the chat room or in the chat today, uh, persons, pivots, and the PPS indicator. So I'll show you guys that in a second here as well. Um, yeah, okay, so let's go into ANVS. Let's start with this one. This is the hot lead gapper on the day. And you can see it, we traded it quite a bit. One, two, three, four, five, six trades we did on this one. Um, a little bit more than usual, I would say. Let's quickly see here. Yeah, eight trades total, six trades on this one. So pretty cool stuff. Um, let me go here. And yeah, by the way, on this monitor tab, these are all just things I had limit orders out for, and I actually still do have limit orders out for. I change these quite a bit. Um, these are just usually um, near big supports or dips or something like that. Um, and I tend to close these out often, so I don't really talk about them too much. But um, if you guys ever wonder, uh, curious what these are. Um, okay, so ANVS, this was a hot ticker today. Um, really, really hot. And we went through our 10, you know, possible, uh, what was it called? 10 criteria for conviction 
conviction ranking. How aggressive should I get the aggressive grade almost? Um, so we we're talking about that today during the stream and in the video description below on the link forward slash uh, connect tradejournal.co forward slash connect. I'll make sure to add it to the slide so you guys can get access to it there. Um, but basically, CRVS and ANVS both got a ranking of eight out of 10, which is a big reason I should get aggressive. Basically, it fit a lot of criteria. Four million float, um, you know, gapping up nicely pre-market, holding its highs very nice, yada, yada. Um, again, the checklist is gonna be um, below. I'll make sure to um, get it updated at least within the next 24 hours. But anyway, uh, we were seeing this one. It had micro news. It had um, also the one thing I didn't like about it. You know, biotechs they tend to only have like kind of one day gappers. I, t I tend to find uh, biotechs kind of being like one hit wonders. Um, so I was a little bit um, weary about that alone. But let's talk about this thing pre market because this thing was really really hot. Um, I like the fact that it had that phase two approval. I like the fact that it was gapping up so aggressively. It was a clear lead gapper, tight float. I mean, this thing had big room to run pre-market as well. We were kind of breaking out of this, um, these zones um, early on. Let me quickly go here to the daily. Yeah, it's um, high of six, six and then the seven zone. So if you go back to the charts, we had clear kind of support here at six. Um, 6.5, some resistance at seven again, 750. So when we were kind of breaking out of these zones, I really liked the fact that we had, you know, probably till 9.5 to run at least. So pre-market or, you know, that's why I had so much conviction behind this trade because you guys probably remember Monday, I was like, I was not convinced about the ticker that we were trading and AYRO. I just, I didn't, I didn't feel it. It, it felt like, um, I, I didn't have the conviction behind the trade. Um, I talked about that a lot in the stream today, but just kind of for this recap video, just know that it was not, um, I couldn't really get behind it for some reason. I think it was a little bit overly biased because it was Monday and I typically always are very cautious. On, I'm typically very cautious on Mondays. Um, so I, I don't know, it is what it is. Um, anyway, ANVS, as it started kind of having this bigger first pullback here, I was like, you know, this could be a really clean setup. Um, because, you know, low volume fading, lead gapper, you know, this thing fits the criteria totally. So I ended up buying here at 36 near, um, near the low and then had one, two, three candles to the upside. And I sold kind of on that break back above nine. I was waiting for maybe one more run here. Um, so I gave this a few chances, but then it didn't happen. This was like a 9% trade. I was super stoked about it. Again, it was smaller position size, about a thousand bucks. Um, so yeah, boom, I was pretty happy. Then we had this potential breakout here. I bought kind of as we found some support here and we're moving back higher. Um, didn't work, it wasn't really a breakout trade. It was still more of a dip, I would say, and um, didn't get that, but you know, then we pulled back about 3%. I was like, okay, well, maybe I should um, cut my losses on this one, but I was like, no, there's big conviction behind this trade working out, so I'm gonna stick with it. Um, so I actually added another $20 here. Uh, or 20 shares and then it popped higher here. But this is where it was having a lot of issues. And I wanted to see this thing break not past 9.15 and then ideally 9.20, that was my goal. We kept on getting rejected and I was like, whatever, I'm gonna drop it for 9.13. Um, so this one wasn't that big of a trade, um, but at least I didn't cut my losses down here when technically my thesis wasn't fully wrong yet. I mean, I was looking for a breakout here, yes. So technically I was wrong, but um, I was still buying a pullback of a, um, you know, a larger breakout move. So in, in a way I wasn't totally wrong. And since the selling pressure was really low here, you can see the volume was kind of selling off right here. Um, I felt kind of confident on buying this dip. I got to say it was a little sketchy. Um, and if it kept on selling, you know, if this selling pressure was looking a little harder, I would have got out. Um, but yeah. Um, I missed this pullback and I eventually bought this breakout here at 918. Um, we kept moving higher at like 930 and I was like, this is looking good, but then it instantly pulled back and I took a loss on this one, um, which is unfortunate because then it actually, you know, had, had that breakout. But this is why I don't like buying breakouts. Somehow I'm always on the wrong side of them and it's a little bit annoying. Um, into the market open, this was very tricky to trade. Um, you know, we we had a break, we in instantly broke higher, then we instantly pulled back on the same candle, then we kind of were here, found a low again, and, and then we pulled higher. And I was like, okay, well maybe this is gonna break the 9.6 zone because that's the big level we wanna break. Um, so I started, so I bought here at 9.42. This was a breakout buy. I was looking for the breakout here, um, we hit like 960 several times and it seemed like a lot of sellers were there and I eventually just got out of 959, um, which was good because right away this thing pulls back um, very aggressively. Like this was an 18, 20% pullback. It would have been nice to somehow trade ANVS again 
um, earlier on. Um, we we had an interesting kind of breakout here at the nine minute EMA. I'm kind of kicking myself in the butt I didn't trade this one. I mean, this kind of screams a typical move I would be trading. I could have at least got the pullback here, and I couldn't have got. I could have at least bought the pullback here. So it was like a miss, a miss, and a miss. And I was like, no, I had three missed entries here. Um, you know, this could have brought me from a two hundred dollar day on ANVS to like a $400 day, 100%, maybe even a five, $600 day because I would have used bigger position size than I used pre-market. So um, ah, yeah, really kind of kicking myself in the butt a little bit on this one. Um, again, miss, miss this entry and then eventually get it at 910 on this candle as we're breaking higher. And I'm like, boom, instantly break higher here. And the reason I was so careful with this one is because ANVS was just halted. And I halted on the way down. It's never a really fun place to be. Um, so I was like, I don't want to be in that same position um, or I don't want to get in that position uh, at all to begin with. So I bought this on the way breaking up, you know, um, started making moves here, um, but then instantly got rejected, started pulling back. And I was like, I just closed my position. This was such a sketchy um, trade. You guys could watch on the live stream. It's, it was funny, but it was sketchy. Um, I traded one more little dip buy, um, or not dip buy, but a potential breakout here at 726. We moved a little bit higher. I closed this position. Uh, I think I made like five bucks off of it or something, but it was a scratch. Um, I wanted a breakout. We didn't get a breakout. I closed my trade. Um, yeah, now it's still pulling back. Honestly, ANVS is pulling back a lot. I would like to see some sort of support come in this one. Maybe we'll see it here at 670 zone because this was a original key kind of um, touch. So maybe we will see it, but I want to be a little bit careful here. Um, for sure. Uh, but yeah, you know, constantly, constantly seeing some support coming in here. It, it is kind of like constantly having these like very aggressive stair step or pullback. So I do want to be a little bit more cautious here, but do you, do you think I will be trading this one as a swing trade? I, I don't, I don't really think so because like I said, biotechs are very tricky to trade they're oftentimes one trick ponies they'll gap up and then before you know it they have an offering now this one has no necessarily negative news um so i do think maybe we could see a potential on this one um you know pulling higher actually i might do an entry on this one let's quickly go back here on 69 and look at it we might be breaking out higher here above the ema we have some buyers coming in on this one um let's see if we break higher here Let's see, 54 possibly getting shipped away here. Big sellers there, so I want to be careful with that. Um, actually, I'm going to cancel my order for now. Um, yeah, bigger buyers coming in there. It looks kind of good. Uh, but yeah, overall, I, I don't really think I'm going to be swing trading this one. Like I said, there is big support in this zone, and I would probably do another um, possible trade on this one. Am I going to hold overnight? I kind of doubt it. Um, I don't really like the overall... Um, set up on here. And, but what I do like, I don't like the fact that there's no macro news. I really want to be only swing trading those kind of macro things, uh, things that have a bit more macro news behind it. But um, talking about that PPS indicator, do, do I like it or not? So I was checking it out here. Um, we, we, it was called out in the chat room today and I was like, well, okay, let's, let's check it out at least here a little bit. Um, boom. And then let me chart looks like a little messed up so wait where is it messed up it's definitely messed up ah, okay yeah okay it was a little messed up um it's it's an interesting indicator it puts these red uh, blue and yellow lines on your chart so basically a blue arrow uh, is a buy yellow arrow is a sell or reversal sometimes you know they work out nicely here is a obviously buy and here it pops the sell here's a buy and the sell comes in very quickly the problem is it's a little bit delayed so sometimes you it'll start flashing you're like should i get an entry and then it, you know it pops up yellow flashing again and then you're like oh i don't know what to do um i think i think it would be kind of cool to have um here's another possible good entry i mean from here to here nice move um from here to here this is uh, this is you know this is where it gets shady again because in this area you know i didn't buy any of this but here it says sell and I actually bought this one. So that's a huge confliction. And this was actually one of my best trades today. Um, and then eventually the buy arrow comes in here, but by the time you would have saw that, this was the end of the move. And then it tells you to sell, right? Um, here it tells you to sell and I actually end up buying before the blue arrow comes because I'm looking at price action. I'm looking at volume, I'm looking at price. The problem that I have with other indicators, and I'm not saying they're bad indicators, um, is the fact that everything is hindsight. Even the nine minute EMA that we're using, even, so here's the nine minute EMA, uh, e, and then here's VWAP. Even those are still calculated in hindsight. So based on all the data we have calculated from the volume, from the price, yada, yada, the open and close of the candles, we now generate this um, indicator. And um, if you want to add this indicator here, you just go to um, studies and you could say, 
um, either edit studies um, and then just type in PPS. Um, there you go, edit the study, add the study here. Or you just, you know, studies, um, add study, all studies. I don't know how to do this on other platforms, so this is just how you do it on this one. Um, PPS, there it is. So under P through R. So yeah, I mean, it's interesting. Uh, here's a here's a possible you know green arrow uh, breakout, and uh, this one actually has a really good sell indicator. So this move right here, this is a 13% move. I actually bought this one. It was actually one of my worst trades. Um, it had no indicators in this area. This is probably one of the best indicators it had, the nine minute EMA breakout, um, and then eventually tells you to sell on this candle, which you probably would have ended up selling too late. Um, so I think, you know, training wheels wise, it could be good, but I think if you want to become a, you know, a really good quick day trader, it might be a little bit too hindsight. Um, and you might be tripping over yourself. You might start being over reliant on something, but I don't know, like, I think it's cool. And I was, I was had it on my other screen all day today, uh, after it was mentioned probably like past 10 o'clock or something, sometime like 10 to 20, 10, 20, um, we were talking about this one. Um, I don't know, like I think I would have ended up tripping over myself too much on uh, using this one. Uh, here we go. So here, it just had a little buy indicator. And remember, we were already talking about ANVS right here. We were already saying that we wanted to buy it at 69. So I should have probably just left my limit order there. Now we'd be up like already a percent or two. Um, I just don't like really trading on the recap because I'm like trying to talk, you know, all these points and then I'm trading and then it just, I don't know, bothers me a little bit. So yeah, I mean, right now, um, you know, nice little breakout, but maybe, you know, the yellow arrow is going to come back and you'd be buying this breakout and then you'd sell um, here at this part. I don't know. I don't know. It. I think getting into trading with this would be good, but understand more behind why, um, what's happening. Obviously, I think this sensor is coming up with two moving averages and if the slower moving average um, or if this, uh, the, um, the slower, uh, the faster moving average breaks above the fa uh, slower moving average, then it probably starts flashing that, that arrow. So it's, it's super cool and interesting to watch and congrats or like awesome work, whoever designed it. Um, I'm sure you can look that up um, on TOS. Um, a lot of people submit their studies on TOS. So it's, re it's really, really cool stuff, I gotta say. Um, will I be using it? Most likely not. And will I be trading ANVS? Most likely not. Uh, another thing with uh, CRVS, this is another um, stock that we traded today uh, that I'm not really sure if I'm going to be trading. I got, I, um, again, I mean, it has really nice support in these zones and maybe I will try to do some sort of dip buy on this at one point today. Maybe I will put some limit orders on this, but I don't think I'm going to randomly be buying it in this zone, hoping it's going to have a big move. Um, Mainly, mainly because the biotechs, I have a hard time getting behind. These with the corona, coronavirus vaccine news, I could probably get behind that a little bit better because these have the potential um, to run multi-days, coronavirus, big macro news everyone knows about, obviously. So um, maybe, I mean, there, there is that. So it's, it's not the worst. Um, both of them are holding their highs really, really well. So I like to see that as well. Um, I think they could be really good entry points near multi-month support and resistance, maybe at $5 or so. I could probably see some bounces off there. I would have tight stops if we broke those areas. Otherwise, um, bounces off the $5, some whole dollar areas would be really, really nice. Um, just like ANVS is bouncing off that 6.5 zone. So I'm, there's clear entry possibilities um, for sure. Um, but we'll have to see how it works. CRVS had that corona, um, coronavirus trial news, 200% gapping pre-market, 23 million float. Um, this one, you know, was ranking number eight uh, on my chart, on my, you know, um, conviction uh, ranking. Um, so I was like, okay, that's a decent conviction ranking. We had a nice little breakout here. Um, I bought this quick pullback looking for a continuation. We didn't get that continuation. I closed this for like a five cents a share profit. It was basically a scratch. Um, then we pulled back again and I almost pulled the trigger on this one. I really kicked myself in the butt that I didn't. This thing pulls up here 10%. This could have been one of my best trades on the day. Um, I could have easily got an entry here at 608. I remember like looking at it, looking at it, looking at it, being like, should I enter? Should I enter? Should I enter? Ah, oh, I should have done it. This could have been a $180 uh, dollar profit, um, alone on this trade. I would have entered with 300 size. Um, because you know, my thesis was right. Um, I was right to close out this trade. I should have just rebought. That was my only issue. I did not rebuy on a setup. That would have been a perfect, perfect rebuy opportunity. So kind of kicking myself a little bit on that one, but oh well. I think CRVS and ANVS both deserve 
attention for a possible overnight trade, possible swing trade. Um, let me know what you guys think about that PPS indicator, kind of interesting. And let me just quickly, very quickly mention this last trade. So we have it on camera, CRV, no wait, that was, we already talked about that one, FTEK. Um, this one could have been a huge trade, but I didn't get a full fill on it. FTEK uh, was pulling back kind of a bit. Uh, let me quickly, oh, I'm getting some freezing here. Oh, what is going on? Okay, so FTEK was pulling back 30% plus um, pre-market. You guys know I don't like that. But then eventually, you know, we started popping higher here. And this was a really, really nice move above VWAP. And I was like, okay, this is looking good. Um, big volume here. Um, $2.5 million um, equipment order, 25 million shares outstanding. Everything was like looking okay. I mean, there was news behind this one. Um, so I placed the limit order here at 21. We get a quick pullback. I get a partial fill. I, I had an order for 1,500 shares. I only got 346 ex executed, even though it shows here that the price even went below um, my limit order. I don't know. It's a little confusing. And then the price rips up 15%. I sold pretty much after I didn't get my full size fill. Um, still walked away with $24, which is kind of impressive because this is like a $400 position size right here. So the fact that I made um, 20 bucks is, is not too bad at all. Um, it's actually kind of mind blowing, honestly. It's like a 5% return. Um, so yeah, kind of crazy uh, that fact, but oh well. Um, FTEK, I never really wanted to trade it the rest of the day. I didn't really feel comfortable trading this one. It could have been a good bounce here at the 17 because this is multi-month support and resistance. 5% bounce could have been good. Um, but I don't know. I kind of felt like it was a little dead to me. Didn't have that much volume on the day. I really wanted to be focused on um, ANVS and CRVS. ANVS was really the lead gapper on the day. And um, right now, ooh, it is selling off quite a bit. So I do want to be careful with this one. But right now, after a big leg to the upside, after 150% run, it's very healthy to have a pullback and consolidate sometimes. Um, so this one could be kind of a late day wonder. Um, but again, you want to have a very, very tight stop. So if this thing, if I bought right now, I would probably have a very tight stop under 6.5 and risk no more than probably 30 cents uh, a share, which would be a pretty decent loss. Um, but it probably would be a loss that would be um, worth the potential to, you know, have this thing start ripping back up here to $8 um, and then maybe even pass that zone. So I don't know. That's how I would play ANVS um, and then maybe hold into that afternoon if it had strength. I really want to see strength. Um, but right now, I'm not too worried about an offering. Usually if an offering comes out, it's not already this low. It's usually trying to move higher and then the offering comes out and falls off a cliff. You don't really see offerings as a, as a stock just blindly, uh, blindly sells off. All right, guys, that's everything for this recap video. I know it was probably a little bit longer, but um, lots to kind of talk about and I felt like it was important stuff. All right, guys, I will see you then. First thing tomorrow, don't forget to smash the like button. Don't forget to subscribe if you're totally new. I want to see you again. Join the community. It's good fun. We also all want to see you there um, in the chat room. Till tomorrow, guys. Stay safe. Make some awesome trades. Ciao, ciao.